you're likely to know one or two of the Illustrator tips in today's video, but very few designers will know every single point in today's tutorial. Now I myself only recently discovered one of these points today, so let's get stuck right in. The first tip is an awesome tool that was hiding in plain sight the entire time. But before I show you this mystery tool, in case you're wondering how my text has this effect in Adobe Illustrator, you can actually change the blend mode in the transparency menu found right here. But what is actually this tool that I'm talking about and where has it been hiding? Well, if you click under the text tool, you will find the touchpad tool. Now with this tool selected, you can move characters around without having to outline your text. And that goes for moving up and down as well. However, there is no shift option which allows you to keep things on a straight line. So you have to nudge the characters on your keyboard using the arrows. You can also hold down shift whilst doing this to make them move 10 times faster. Now this tool is great and I'm sure many people don't even know it exists in the first place. Now the next tip is again based around text and let me quickly ask you to think of a font right now off the top of your head. Now you might go ahead and say something like Myriad and that's because most of us have this font appear when we generate some text in Illustrator and that's because it's a default setting. However, we can actually completely change that and also a lot more than just the font itself. So as you can see, I have Myriad here, but let's come into the character style panel and then navigate over to a character style options menu. In this box, we can put in our defaults for when we generate some text. And obviously let's address that font first and foremost. And the font I personally use quite a lot is Elrond. And so I'm going to select that and also a bold version. But we can also change things like the leading, which is the spacing between lines and also the kerning settings. And I'm going to use optical because I do find myself using that more often. And these are all going to be now default settings for me in my Illustrator program. And so to test that theory, I'm now going to generate some text and it should start with Elrond and my specific settings that I just punched in. So moving away from text, let's look at another setting that also has been hiding somewhere in Illustrator. And this time it's going to be useful for illustrations, but it's also good for some other things too. Now on this design, I have a highlight on the girl's hair. And this highlight is a stroke style because I've used the width tool to adjust the thickness throughout the entire path. I did this by creating the stroke first and foremost, and then pressing Shift and W to access the width tool. And this isn't the tip, by the way. The issue that you can have is that you want to repeat this process over and over again, and that's going to be annoying because it wastes time and it's just, you know, tedious. So what we can do is to head into the appearance panel and then switch off this setting right here. With this turned off, Illustrator is going to remember the previous style of the object you had selected, which means you can then just start drawing and the style is automatically used on the next part of your design. Of course, there are times this setting is best kept turned on, but for instances like this, it is wise to keep it switched off. So staying with this illustration, let's talk about color for a second here. But first, if you want to see your design without any anchor points or paths, press Command or Control H and you're going to hide them from view. That's a pretty handy little tip there. But if you wanted to know how many colors are on this design or even limit the design to a specific amount of colors, say for example, maybe you're printing a t-shirt, how would you do that? Well, we can come into the recolor panel here and then you're going to notice that you can adjust the amount of colors in this little box and then we can move through as many colors as we want for our design. And again, this is helpful when you're printing via Adobe Illustrator. And you can also move your colors around too. And actually this panel is something I suggest that designers do really get to know because it has a lot of uses and a lot of things going on inside it. So here I have a logo emblem and do we have an actual scope or a feel for how big this thing really is? We can press Command or Control R for the rulers and then right click to change the measurements. So for example, let's go for centimeters. However, in Illustrator, we can zoom in to 100% and whatever value you see on screen is going to be true to real life. 
So with my logo here, if I grabbed a ruler and then placed it on the screen, my logo would measure exactly 21.42 centimeters. And knowing this can help you with certain designs because then you can actually picture and visualize things on your screen in real size. And there were some tips today for Adobe Illustrator and let me know if you're that 1% of designers who did know all of these already. But of course, until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.